Hey guys, Omar here, and today we're looking at the 85mm 1.8 from Viltrox. And Viltrox is really kicking butt. You know that we recently reviewed the 23mm 1.4 for Fujifilm, and that lens performed well enough to get. Now that lens I purchased myself and I'm keeping, <laughs> so uh, this one was sent to me by Viltrox. Uh, to test out. They asked me if I wanted to test it for the Sony system. I said, sure, why not? I actually own the 85 millimeter 1.8 for Sony. And so for fun, I wanted to see how the two compare. And I figured it would help some of you out there decide which is right for you. Now compared to the Sony, they're very equal in size. Now, unlike the Fujifilm Viltrox we reviewed, this one has a plastic, oh, asthma. Now the lens is actually really pretty. I actually prefer lenses with a large focus ring and this one delivers. It takes up pretty much the whole lens there. Unlike the Sony has a smaller focus ring. Now the 85 millimeter 1.8 does have an AM, AM FM radio built into it. The Sony has an AF MF switch and it also has a custom button which you can set to ISO or I autofocus. That's a perk of the Sony uh, lens. But the Viltrox has this really cool red, you know, metal thing there. Bling. I do make a Fujifilm version of this lens. I don't have my hands on that. So I don't know if anything I say in this video will pertain to that. But I'll link up some reviews below of the 85 for Fujifilm. Now I tested their focus speed. Believe it or not, the Viltrox is faster to focus for single focus to minimum focus distance to something distant and back. It was a little quicker than the Sony. I've said it many times on this channel, I don't think really anyone putting out a lens nowadays, I don't think anyone can make a bad lens. Even at wide open, we're seeing most lenses are sharp enough. <laughs> With that said, I know you guys like to pixel peep. So here is the both. here are both lenses wide open at one to one. And you can judge for yourself, but both are really, really, really sharp. And the Spider-Man test here. So let's go a little bit closer. Pixel peeping, brah. And here are the lenses at 2.8. By the way, this is a great album, if you didn't know. And here's the Spider-Man test. I can't tell a difference between the two. So I think they're, I would call them equally sharp. Here's one-to-one -one at F8. And again, they're both really, really sharp. Here we are at two to one for the Pixel Peepers, two to one. <laughs> Sony on the left, Viltrox on the right. They're both freaking sharp. I mean, look how far away that old microscope is. And one thing to be aware of is the Sony does go up to F22, the Viltrox does not. So you have actually one extra stop of, you know, closing down the aperture. Minimum focus distance is pretty, pretty much comparable on both. Uh, from this side-by-side -side shot, here's the Viltrox on the left, the Sony on the right. Uh, if I'm looking at them, they look very identical. And by the way, if you're liking my colors here, we did a video on Sony colors. I can't stand Sony colors straight out of camera. So I built my own colors using a color checker passport. I made a video on that. I'll link it up below. And if we're doing a little dental work here, two to one on the Hulk, both are super sharp and uh, just great resolution with both lenses. You know, there's a little purple fringing on the lens. That's the, that's kind of to be expected from any 85 1.8. That happens with my Canon 85 1.8. Some lenses are better than others at controlling that. It's not a tough fix. I mean, here you just have to go to lens correction and there is a defringe. You can sort of get rid of the purple pretty easily. So I asked my little girl to walk into the office and the Viltrox, this is on continuous autofocus with a zone and eye autofocus. And the Viltrox seemed to be doing a good job uh, in grabbing her face. She's completely focused so far. So down the whole hallway, she was in focus. However, as soon as she started to get out of focus, I found that the lens, once the lens lost focus, it didn't reacquire focus as well as the Sony. So here it already lost focus just a little bit and it couldn't re-grab fast enough. So we're on a high burst here and it was, it was already too late. The Viltrox couldn't reacquire focus. I felt that was the main issue with the lens is that it couldn't get, it couldn't find its way back. So here I said, you know what, let's just try one a little closer. We'll give the Viltrox the benefit of the doubt. Let's start a little easier here. She started from the wall and right away, again, it wavered. And if it wavered, it couldn't reacquire focus. <laughs> I tried with the Sony. I said, all right, maybe it's just this room and this lighting. So here the Sony did a much better job with her moving. It 
basically, by the way, I should have had my shutter speed. I apologize. I should have had my shutter, shutter speed a little faster to grab crisp images. She, there is a little bit of motion blur, but it's still acquiring focus pretty much the whole way that she's coming forward. Now here, the Sony lost focus a little bit. Uh, but then reacquired as she got closer and then it was lost. She's walking at a good, pretty good clip here, okay? <laughs> so then we slapped the Viltrox again, which apparently is a hilarious thing. And I told her to walk, let's go, let's go. We started walking. Uh, and again, once it lost focus, it couldn't reacquire, okay? Just my copy anyway. So we tried the Sony again. Come on, kiddo, walk towards me. Again, ignore the motion blur. That's just a shutter speed issue. Uh, but here the focus is acquired pretty much the whole way. And I tried the Viltrox again <laughs> just to see if it would. And again, it did not. So the Sony 85 millimeter 1.8 performed a lot better with eye autofocus and continuous moving towards the camera. However, I wanna end on a good note because I actually did bring this lens to a job and uh, most of our shots, we weren't doing anything that was coming towards the camera quickly. This was really stressing out the lens. So that means this lens is not for that. So if you have people walking high burst towards camera, it may suffer a little bit. But I brought it on a shoot and it did beautifully because I was just doing portraits. There was one time where I had my uh, subject moving around and we were having like kind of a playful time with hair and I later saw that the Viltrox was struggling. So this is straight out of camera colors. This is what Adobe thinks uh, Sony colors should look like when they come in here. And this is what it looks like edited with the color checker passport. Here's a straight out of camera again colors. Uh, let me show you straight out of camera. So she's pretty sharp. They're back there. Beautiful bokeh. You can see the bokeh here on the trees. Looks pretty. You want to get in the bokeh? You want to get in there, yo? You want to get in there? And here's what it looks like edited. Uh, so beautiful colors, beautiful rendition. And here's where we were sort of fooling around and getting some interactions with our uh, subject. And I had eye autofocus here. I have my Sony a7 III set to have an eye autofocus button. So I just push that and it follows. And here we had a great laugh and the ca camera still in focus. This was the shot we got. So she started to move around a little too much. And now this is what I mean. If your subject moves out of the focus, the reacquiring I found from the Viltrox took a little time. It needs a little time to get back because what we got next was blurry. Um, and then still she was not in focus. Here the eye, um, this kid looks totally like uh, Chelsea Northrup. Doesn't she look like Chelsea Northrup? I just realized that. Again, this is an edited shot. If, if your subject is standing there, it acquires eye autofocus really quickly. Um, so if you, if you photograph things that don't move too much or subjects that don't move too much, you're gonna get a lot of hits. So think about that. Here's another straight out of camera, the eye autofocus completely grabbed, and here is the image edited. Okay, so look how beautiful, uh, this is all sharp here, and we're shooting at 1.8. Straight out of camera, she looks unhappy because of those Sony colors. <laughs> and then here she is edited. So overall, I felt if your subjects are not moving or are staying in the same plane, this is out of camera, straight out of camera, this is edited. Uh, I felt that you know it acquired focus, no problem. And so this is another example where I autofocus just completely grabbed and ignored this foreground bokeh here. Here we use some flash, so we expose for the background and then lit her up for this shot here. I think Viltrox is really kicking butt with their bokeh. Uh, so they have very circular bokeh. And here's another shot from the Viltrox. Beautiful bokeh, soft, creamy. Really great. So the, as you can see, you can get beautiful portraits. I would just say that if you have your subjects moving too much, you may wanna go with the Sony, but if you wanna save some money and go with the Viltrox, it's good enough if your subjects aren't moving really quickly, if you're not doing that kind of work. It's sharp, has beautiful bokeh, it's well built, and it's a good price. So I recommend it if you know its limitations. All right, I'll see you guys next time.